Hello YouTube, St Bob here of St Bob's YouTube channel. Uh, this is going to be something slightly different to my usual videos of uh, Zion and uh, Minecraft. Uh, this is going to be uh, another editor tutorial for a very very classic game which you may have already seen uh, on my shortcuts there. Um, it's going to be Dungeon Keeper 2. Now it's a very old game and it's a damn shame they didn't make uh, the uh, sequel. Dungeon Keeper 3, but nevertheless, I still play Dungeon Keeper quite a lot. Uh, it's one of my all-time favourite classic games. Um, and I, I just want to uh, show other people out there that if you get getting a bit bored with the maps that come with the standard uh, Dungeon Keeper 2, um, and the Gold Edition as well, then you can actually make your own maps. Uh, and you can do that by downloading an editor. And uh, what you want to do is you can actually go to... I've got two screens here, so let me just drag this over. So what you want to do is go to this web address here, which I will actually pop in the uh, in the show notes, and uh, it links you straight to a Dungeon Keeper 2 official world editor. Um, so I don't know how official that actually is. I don't know if this is the one that Bullfrog released or whether this is a, a user-created editor, but it works pretty well. Um, and uh, all you do is you just click on there, download now, and it downloads it. And it will actually download it um, in a RAW file. So just extract it anywhere um, to your desktop, for example. And then what you want to do is open your location of your Dungeon Keeper file and pop it in the data editor and just pop it straight in here. Overwrite everything. Anything it says it's conflicting with, just overwrite it or merge. Um, and then you run Dungeon Keeper to editor. Um, so we'll do that now, and here we go. Uh, this is how it is. This is the, the first screen that you'll see. There's nothing changed or anything like this. It's just the normal one. Uh, so what you want to do, first of all, is you actually want to create a new map. So let's just call this as test for now. And let's make it uh, the maximum you can have width and height is 128 by 128. That is a huge map. It is absolutely massive, so don't... You, know, you don't really need to do that. So I'm just going to go 64 by 64. Um, and we'll do base. Uh, uh, do it as rock. You can put it as anything you want. Any texture. Uh, terrain texture you can put it as. So you could put it as gems if you wanted. Um, or you could put it as a hero. Let and just fill it up. don't know why you'd want to do that. But just put it as rock for now. That's just normal rock. And press OK. And here we go. So we have our map. And you can see it's, well, it will be 64 by 64. You can't really tell from this, but you can zoom in and out. Um, let's just zoom out even further. You can probably see the whole map. There you go. That's the whole map there, and it is quite big. Um, so we'll just put it 100% for now while we zoom in. There we go. Okay. Um, so what you want to do, first of all, right from the get-go, what you want to do is go to Level, Level Properties, and keep your level name as test if you want. Put in your description of the, of the map or the author name. I don't know. This is just some random stuff. You don't, have, you don't have to put anything in there at all. But if you want to, then do that first. Get it out of the way. Uh, the next, go back to level at the top here and go to edit level variables. Now, I don't know what half of this stuff does. All I know, the most important stuff that you want to tick are these two right here. That's multiplayer level and skirmish level. This will actually flag your saved map as a map that's available in multiplayer level and, and a skirmish level. Now what that means is if you didn't have that ticked and you saved the map and saved it into the maps folder you wouldn't be able to find it at all in game. Uh, it just doesn't flag it up. So what you have to do is you have to click those two or click one of those depending if you want to play it online or not. Um, and uh, make sure that it is ticked completely otherwise you will never find it um, so now that's that's actually done we've set that so let's just double check it's set multiplayer level skirmish level done um, and you can kinda I don't really know what half of this stuff is um, but this is just a basic tutorial to get you a map and get you playing in uh, hopefully you could probably learn the rest yourselves um, it's quite self-explanatory um, so you click OK and what you want to do is you want to go over to this little box here on the left hand side where it says test is the map name uh, good player neutral player keep keep a one um, <clears throat> excuse me so what you want to do is you want to right click on keep a one 
and edit keeper properties and here you go in here you can rename the keeper if you want you can rename it yourself this will be you this will be the first player and um, you can increase or decrease the starting gold uh, you can change the creature pool um, the room availability you could add all of these and change everything but what you want to take note of is this option here now for a player for a human player you need to make sure this is unchecked and by default it always is so what you want to do is click OK for a basic map that's all the keeper settings that's all the player settings done so right click on your map name for this it's test and create new player so here we go we've got keeper 2 you want to right click on keeper 2 and edit keeper properties and this is going to be a computer player so we'll go computer player click it and now you'll see this box has now become available and you can open this up and this will actually give you a different AI type settings so you've got master keeper you know I'm guessing these are difficulty settings um, and then you've got build order and you can actually change the build order uh, if you really want to if you if you've got a fantastic build that you want to go against um, that you've looked on the internet or, or whatever you can pop that in there um, and see if you can beat it so that's that's one way you can do that and obviously you can mess about with all these tabs which I'm not going to go into because there's so much to talk about and the tutorial will probably take hours so that is keeper one human player set that is keeper two a computer player set um, and you can add as many as you want you know well I have to say as many as you want you know up to the maximum that you're allowed um, and you can actually leave it there with the keeper one and keeper two so that's done um, and let's uh, let's get placing some buildings shall we so what you want to do first of all is go to the rooms tab here at the bottom and you want to click dungeon heart but you want what you also want to do before you do that is you need to make sure that you have keeper one selected now that will change the color of anything that you place um, to red for example uh, for player one and it will be blue for player two um, so when you want to play something for player two you've got to make sure that you've got keeper two selected um, so let's place the dungeon heart and there we go that is player one so you ready right click on the center don't right click anywhere else cause it won't work and uh, they're just room spaces and that's the actual object in the middle so you right click the edit dungeon heart properties and make sure that it is set to owner keeper one it will be by default and it should be when you change it over to keeper two so there we go what you also want to do um, when I when I first started playing with the editor I noticed that when I saved it to the map um, and tried to play it in game I had an issue where all my imps would just start going around and trying to control uh, the edges of the room um, and when I tried to dig anywhere they wouldn't until they'd claimed everything which is fine which is what you want them to do but right at the very start you want a room that's already claimed by you and the walls are already claimed by you so that you can get straight on and start digging so in order to do that what you need to do is go back to terrain and click the reinforced wall because remember this is the the room size and that's the object there in the middle so what you'll remember is that you do actually have a path around here and that's already yours so you don't have to worry about the dungeon heart so much but what you need to do is make sure that you've got a reinforced wall all around your dungeon heart so your imps aren't spending minutes converting all the dirt um, to reinforced walls to play around reinforced walls um, so that's 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 done so when you start the game now you'll have a fully working dungeon heart you'll have it working with a reinforced walls so your imps are just sat around not doing anything until you tell them to um, but you need to put yourself in a portal so we do that and we do that by placing it anywhere you want it to be and it is three by three and a three by three portal is an actual standard size portal there's no room around that at all so when you put that in you have to dig yourself um, a room around it uh, we don't have to I mean you could just leave it like that but you, you know you want to put in um, a reinforced walls around it and make sure there's a path around it as well that's already claimed so you pop that in make sure you're leaving a gap 
um, between the, re the reinforced wall there. Um, we'll put another one in as well, just to just to be greedy. And you go back to terrain. Um, just get rid of that. Sometimes it gets a bit buggy uh, when you have a, a room on your cursor and you go to the sides. It sometimes gets stuck. I don't know if that will actually save itself there, um, but we'll just continue anyway. Um, so what you want to do is you want to get the claim path. Bearing in mind you must have keeper one selected when you're doing the base, and you want to put a path all the way around. There we go. So imagine now this is the, the one one by one path that goes all the way around and then you have your room on the inside, uh, your portal on the inside which is three by three. Um, so that's obviously five by five um, but it's like a, a one thick path all the way around. And we'll do the same here as well. Okay and what you also want to do is make sure that you've got a reinforced wall all the way around it. This is just really that simple. Okay. Um, what you also want to do is make sure that you, your imps aren't busy uh, destroying one of the reinforced walls to get through. So you can start the map, um, if you want to, with two portals already claimed, already done, ready to go, and that's it. That's it all done. Basically that, that is everything um, that, you need to, that you need to do in terms of the bases. What you want to do is make sure that you've got some sort of resource. So you can put gold, um, and you can put it anywhere you want. Um, or you could put gems. So for this one, we'll put, you know, let's put let's put a gem in. Why not? Let's put two gems in over here. Look, and let's pop some room space around here. Da, da, da. Oops, we'll get rid of that one in a second. I'm not sure how to get rid of them. The only way um, I found in order to get rid of uh, blocks that you've placed that you don't want anymore is to overwrite it with another one. Um, and that gets rid of, I don't know if there's, if there's another way of doing that, but that, that's the way I've found to do that. Um, and let's not forget that you want to put a reinforced wall around. Um, so it's already claimed, or if you don't want to, you can leave that completely, uh, completely hidden from the player, and you can just let them explore. So you've got one there that's already been claimed, um, and one there that you know you have to dig through that reinforced wall to get access to and you're just playing like a normal game then. So there we go, we've got a fully working base there. You've got your dungeon heart placed with already claimed walls. You've got two portals uh, already claimed, ready to go. And you've got a gem uh, resource which is all ready to go and um, fully controlled. And then you've got one at the top right which has, uh, which is yet to be discovered. So what we'll do is we will go and do the second base and um, I'll not talk through that again I'll just quickly do it so you can see see the difference and um, there isn't really any difference at all uh, but you'll you'll see um, also I've noticed with this particular editor this box pops up every now and again um, and this I think this is like an auto save feature for some reason because all it does is it just saves the game saves the map nothing special so for now just click no because I will show you how to do that um, shortly so what you want to do is we want to go to the place where you want to um, let's pop this to 25 and you can see so there's there's the map there uh, so let's go over here to the bottom right corner and let's uh, do, 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 let's get over there and let's uh, select keeper 2 and let's go start building As you can see there, uh, because I've changed it to player 2, the colours of the reinforced walls and the claimed path do change, so you can see the difference there. Okay, so there we go. We have two identical bases. Um, let me just just double check. There we go. We've got two identical bases, um, and uh, we're pretty much 
good to go with the map. So what you want to do, once you're happy and you've created your map, um, you can then go ahead and start to save it. So what you want to do is click Save As, and by default, the Maps folder should pop up. Okay, um, and what you want to do is call it whatever you want to test. If that's the the, the name, um, and click Save. This box will pop up, and I've no idea exactly what difference this makes if you say yes or no. Um, so for now, just click yes. It hasn't done any harm that I've seen. Um, and what you want to do is you want to actually exit the editor. Now this doesn't make any difference to the game, but that message will continuously pop up um, once the you know if the editor is still open. So close the game, uh, the editor, sorry, and let's run the game. And hopefully this doesn't mess with my video editor because um, I've got two monitors running at the same time. So I don't I don't know if it's messed about with the resolution. So hopefully this is fine. <laughs> We'll skip all the intros, we'll get it working. So let's go to single player, let's go to skirmish. Uh, let's change map and let's find the test. You see that's one that I created earlier. Just to have a play about with. So we're looking for test. There we go. And press uh, 64 by 64, you can see. So let's confirm. You can go into game settings and mess around with them, but for now, let's just see it working in action. And there we go. So we now have a dungeon heart. We have a portal, uh, which is already claimed and ready to go. And we also have this portal, which is claimed and ready to go. And we have the gem that is ready to go. Um, and our imps are just stood around waiting for your uh, your bidding. So, guys, that's pretty much all I'm going to show in this tutorial. There are a few things that I may do. Creature has entered your dungeon. Yes. Thank you for that, Overseer. Um, yes, there is a few more things that I do want to show, and I'll do it in a different tutorial. Uh, things like giving your map a thumbnail uh, picture for when you choose it in your um, in in game. You can see a little uh, screenshot of it, um, and uh, there are a few other things as well that I'll show. But for now, that is a very basic understanding of how to go about creating your own map um, and get it actually working for multiplayer and single player use. Um, so for now guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll uh, see you next time.